Amen. The Lord be with you. And all is good with you. Very good morning, very warm welcome to St. Paul's on this the first Sunday of Lent, in which we traditionally commemorate Jesus going into the wilderness to fast for 40 days and to be tempted by the devil. So as we prepare ourselves to meet Christ in his word and in his sacrament, let us therefore call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, 
for we have sinned against thee. Innocent captive taken unresisting, falsely accused and for our sinners sentenced, save us we pray thee, Jesus our Redeemer. Hear us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have sinned against thee. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Christ himself, innocent though he was, died once for sins, died for the guilty to lead us to God. In the body he was put to death, in the spirit he was raised to life. And in the Spirit, he went to preach to the spirits in prison. Now it was long ago, when Noah was still building that ark, which saved only a small group of eight people by water. And when God was still waiting patiently, that these spirits refused to believe. That water is a type of the baptism which saves you now which is not the washing off of physical dirt, but a pledge made to God from a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has entered heaven and is at God's right hand. Now that he has made the angels and dominations of powers his subjects, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ, Christ King, King of eternal glory. glory. Retreat, for example. 
So what happens to us when we enter our wilderness? What happened to Jesus as well? So that this transformation becomes possible. But what I think happens is this. Basically, when you enter the wilderness, you administer a huge shock to your system in body, mind and spirit. And it is when we administer the shock to our system that paradoxically things can change. So as a simple example, when you go cold water swimming, you administer a shock to your body. But it is the shock which starts the inner healing process within. And people report feeling better in a whole host of ways. And it's a well-known cure, a cure, well-known way of healing depression. So when you enter the wilderness, the shock is such that the inner healing process begins mentally, physically, and spiritually. So let's have a look. Physically then, when you fast, you put the body into shock. And this starts up the natural defense and healing systems of the body. So the body starts repairing itself in all sorts of amazing ways. It's no coincidence that nearly all religions encourage fasting. It is good for body and soul. Mentally, when you enter a period of wilderness, you leave behind all that is familiar and all that has propped you up. You enter a place where all the distractions and mental stimulation disappear. What happens then is that fears, temptations and wounds can come to the surface. And only when they come to the surface can they be healed. So painful though it is, this is a place of mental healing. The Desert Fathers experienced exactly this. They were confronted by often lurid temptations, fears and old wounds. Yet by looking them in the eye, the process of healing could begin. And spiritually, the wilderness stands for the place where God appears to be absent. All our old ideas and comforting images of God prove wanting. But the result is that only in this place can our souls be open to that mystical union with God, which is the goal of our spiritual journey. So the wilderness is the empty space where God can come to us in new and healing ways. Monks and nuns deliberately enter such a life, which is a kind of permanent wilderness, quite specifically removing all distractions, entering into silence and solitude, practicing fasting and ascetic spiritual practices, and all of it not to escape the world, but in order to open themselves to the mystical union with God. And theirs is only a more focused version of the life we are all to lead as followers of Christ. All of this is countercultural, of course. Our culture encourages us to avoid difficult and painful experiences. Yet it is in precisely such experiences we are often healed and transformed. Jesus entered the wilderness and experienced all of this. In Mark's Gospel we continue to read that he was immediately baptised by John and saw the heavens opened. God the Father spoke and the Spirit descended in the form of a dove. Mystical union with God then. Countless people have followed Jesus' example. I'm studying the rules of Benedict at the moment. And Benedict did what Jesus did. His world, the 6th century, was collapsing at the end of the Roman Empire. And so he removed himself from the moral and social decay of his day and lived in a cave for three years, eating nuts
nuts and berries, away from all distractions, in silence and emptiness. And out of that, he emerged transformed to found several monasteries, including Monte Cassino, and he wrote his rule, which turned out to be one of the foundational documents of Western civilization. Not bad then. And I was watching a TV programme the other week about a man who similarly rejected the moral decay of his profession in professional sports training. He was very wealthy and living quite the life, but he gave all his wealth away and went to live in a piece of woodland in Croatia. He lived there on his own for years, just in a hammock, foraging, building his home with his own bare hands, eating only once a week, and praying for eight hours a day. And he said he had found eternal happiness there. He now has a girlfriend and volunteers with sports clubs, but he still lives in his woodland space. The wilderness transformed his life, stripped him back to the essentials, and enabled him to find that union with God. In Lent, we enter into the wilderness ritually and liturgically, through greater prayer, fasting, and by stripping back to the essentials. It may not be as complete as Jesus' own wilderness, but it may still nevertheless help us to kickstart the healing processes within, to reorient our lives, and to open ourselves to mystical union with God. It can also be a symbolic time to focus on those points in our lives where we have really entered the wilderness, that dark night of the soul when God has felt absent when nothing made sense anymore, when we have been confronted by our inner demons and fears. But these times are not the times when things go wrong, but the necessary dark times in which our healing processes are activated. So Lent is a holy time then. The word in Old English means springtime, a time of growth, when out of the periods of darkness in our lives, a new life begins. So let us enter our Lent of fast with hope and serenity as the place where we may encounter the living God. Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now bring our prayer to the Father. For God's help for us as we journey through Lent, that we may encounter the Lord who offers himself so generously to us through his Son. Thank you. 
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings. For with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the
the Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. For the showing of our
Christ our Lord. And also with you. May bountiful blessing of the Lord be praying come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, that you be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and come down upon you today and always. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. That we may be made worthy of the promises of 